G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. It's time for another update on our little vineyard. Today it's time to train the grapevines that have been happily growing for about six weeks. So in this video I'm going to show you how to string them up, how to pinch out the laterals and how to get them really moving. Don't forget, if you like this video, please hit the little red button down there and subscribe to the channel. You've got no idea how much it helps bring in new content each week. Let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is every vine that bursts past the top of the guard, we need to set up strings for so that we can train the vine to a single trunk. Now for today's task, you're going to need two things. You're going to need some training string and you're going to need some secateurs. If you're working in a large vineyard, you'd buy a roll of baling twine. But at $90, that's a big investment. When I can buy training jute for $3 a roll, three, three rolls should get me out of trouble. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this to the top of the three wires that we ran out in our last video. So I'll show you how I tie off the wire. We're going to do a clove hitch. So we go around the wire, across the standing string, back through the loop we just made, and pull tight. I like to then finish off with a half hitch to stop the string from pulling loose. Make sure you tie your string directly above the grapevine because you want to be able to pull this string nice and tight. Run your string out and cut it off just before ground level with your secateurs. The next thing you want to do is do exactly the same knot to your fruiting wire. So around make a loop, back through the loop, and pull. We don't need to do our half hitch with this one because it's a halfway knot. This will become very important next season. Now what we do is we utilize the last of our little holes in our training guards. We put the string through that hole. That ties the guard to the string, brings the, the grapevine up close to the string, and then we tie off around our dripper wire in much the same way. So we pull the string through, we go around the back, pull the string through again, and poke it through the hole. When you pull it up, keep it all nice and tight, and then finish off with a half hitch. So now what we've got is a string tied from the dripper wire to the fruiting wire, and all the way up to our top foliage wire. This is going to give us the structure to grow our grapevine up nice and tall. The next thing we have to do is reduce all our growth to the one strong leader. So this is where the opening vine guards that we selected last time are really going to come into their own. They're much easier to work with than the plastic sleeves you can get. So the first thing you need to do is you need to decide which leader you're going to use. Now both of these are about the same height. So what we'll do is we'll come down further into the structure of the vine and we'll figure out which one is going to be more secure and better structured. To be honest with you, both of these are coming out of the top of the original rootling, um, so either one is absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with this one because it's slightly thicker and it's got less bend between the internodal spaces, meaning that it's going to be a little bit stronger. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off my unwanted one and then very carefully pull that away from the other leader. You want to be careful at this stage because the tendrils will grab each other and you don't want to crack off part of the leader that you've just selected to survive. The next thing we're going to do is cut off the other growth that's going to take energy away from our selected leader. You can leave one or two buds at the base just as spares in case you're worried about strong winds or something going wrong. The next step much like growing tomatoes, is to pinch out the laterals from behind the leaf stems or the petioles. We do this once again to stop the grapevine sending out other shoots that it's going to put its energy into away from the one strong leader that we want to become a trunk. So we leave the petiole and the main leaf, but we remove the, the small shoot that's growing out of the junction between the petiole and the stem called the node we remove that growth like that. And we do that all the way up. That's gonna concentrate all of the root energy into growing this one long stem. Now that we've cleaned it up, 
we can tuck him up back into bed. The vine guard now is acting like a lovely little hothouse, keeping all of that moisture in to the young plant and preventing rabbit damage and things like that. And then all we have to do is curl our chute around the training string once or twice and come back every couple of weeks and just keep curling it around and keeping it growing to the top. Now this is a task to take pretty seriously and try and get right on your vineyard. The earlier you can start training your grapevines, the earlier you're concentrating all of the energy into that one trunk that you want between the ground and a handspan below the fruiting wire. Now already there's probably been howls of protest out there from people saying that I should have cut the shoot tip of the growing grapevine off and left four or five laterals to burst out sideways for next year's cordon. To that I say no. I used to train in that way, but now I just go straight up the string like a tomato. There's a good reason for that. The shoot tip here is producing oxen. Oxen encourages strong growth of the shoot tip and discourages lateral growth. Remember, we're not gonna be getting any fruit off these grapevines next year. So having lots and lots of cordon growth out the sides is irrelevant. All I'll achieve if I cut the shoot tip off at this time of year is to slow down the growth of the vine and set it back a month. What I want to do instead in the first year is put all of the energy of the plant into growing a really strong trunk. If I don't set the vine back at all and I keep it shooting for the stars, this trunk is going to be stronger and stronger and stronger. So this winter, all I have to do is make one cut about 50 centimetres above the fruiting wire and fold that down to make a single cordon on the wire simply to hold the trunk in place. When I do that, I'll remove my top's training string and I'll leave this training string behind to keep my trunk nice and straight. Remember, next year, if these vines get any fruit on them at all, I'm gonna be cutting them off. For the first two years, I'm gonna be concentrating on this beautiful trunk and this amazing root system. What I get up here, to me, is completely irrelevant as long as it's healthy and doesn't get in the way of a strong trunk. So that's why I train my vines straight up and I don't pinch out the tips and start growing my laterals too early. You set the vine back and you cost yourself weeks and weeks of establishing growth. I hope you found this tip useful. Now I need to get back to the vineyard and continue training the rest of my beautiful little vines. Please remember guys, do hit that little red button down there and subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me out in producing new videos each week. Until then, best of luck with your projects. I'll catch you later.